All right, now I'm going to employ them up here, okay? Because remember, what I want is not like the gradient here at like, like what does that have to do with this? I want dy on dx, right? dy on dx. And I have this pesky theta kind of hanging around in the middle, all right? So what piece of information am I going to use that can connect a derivative of this and derivative of this to a derivative of this? Two words. You don't know? Chain rule. Chain rule. Chain rule. Okay. I'm after dy on dx, right? I'm after dy on dx. Well, for example, just looking at this line, right? If I look at this line using what I've just kind of established right now, I can work out dy on d theta fairly easily, right? Like that b is just a constant, okay? So I'll write that down in a second. And in the same way, I'll need the other piece of chain rule, which is d theta on dx. Now that's a little more awkward, but all I need to do is find out what dx on d theta is, which I can do, and then I just need to take the reciprocal. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's just go ahead and evaluate dy and d theta, that was the easier one, right? We just established that when you differentiate sine, he turns into cosine, okay? And then there's the b hanging out the front, right? So the simple derivative of dy on d theta is just b cos theta. No dramas, okay? Then when I go to differentiate the next thing, because x is the subject, I can only do dx on d theta first. I'd have to reverse the whole equation, get the inverse function and so on, which I'm not equipped to do yet. So what is dx on d theta? What's going to happen? <coughs> Cos <coughs> turns into negative sine. You see that? Right. So therefore, this a cos theta will differentiate into minus, minus a. a sine theta. Okay. So keep in mind, that's multiplying by... Now I want the reciprocal, don't I? The reciprocal. So I'm going to go 1 on minus a sine theta. Theta. I know it's not customary to write negative signs on the denominator, but do you see why I'm doing that? I'm trying to indicate this is a reciprocal of a whole thing, right? That minus sign isn't going to go up the top until I simplify theta. Okay, which only takes one more line, really. Let's just tidy it ever so slightly. Minus b cos theta on the top and a sine theta on the denominator. Okay. Right. Say it again. Now, I could, I suppose, write this as minus b on a times cot theta. In theory, I could do that. However, I certainly am not going to do that just yet because the question I want to ask is, why did I do this? Where, where was this going? I, I wanted gradient because it was going to factor into here, remember? I'm going to put the point together with the gradient using point gradient form. And then I'm going to get the equation of this tangent. Okay? But look, look, look at this point. Do you see that the pieces in here are very likely to simplify with the pieces here? Does that make sense? So even though I could write it as cot, I, I gain nothing out of it. I'm going to have to turn it back into cosines and sines when I want it to play together with this. Let's do it. The equation of the tangent at P is simply y minus y1, m, x minus x1. Okay? And I know what all of those pieces are. One, two, three. Okay? So let's just quickly get that down. y minus Okay, now you look at that. I'm going to give you a minute to get a bit of a head start on me. Clearly, there's some simplifying that can happen here. Okay, how much simplifying can be done? Why don't you give it a shot? And if you can give me the answer in, um, well, I was going to say general form. Yeah, general form will do it. And then I'll show you um, the general, the, the form that's usually used is not general form, but it's not very far from it. So give it a go. See how far you can simplify down. I just want to point out the way that I went about it. Okay, now I asked it for it. I asked for it in general form, okay? So I have skipped a line here, but it's a fairly boring line. Um, I've multiplied through by a sine theta to get rid of that fraction, and then I've expanded the right-hand side, as most of you have done, okay? If you gather every single thing on the left-hand side, which is the way general form is, then you get this kind of mess, okay? But clearly, there's something you know, there's a trigonometric identity that's going to help you, namely... Sine squared equals theta plus cos squared theta. Very good. So if you factor out here that minus AB, right, you're going to get sine squared plus cos squared, which is always equal to 1 for every value of theta. 
So therefore, this really is just minus AB. Okay? Now, being that, when we have a look at this thing, right, if I could write minus AB over here, that would be fine. But if I put the AB on the right-hand side, which is not general form anymore, the reason why this ends up being nice is because the next line I'm going to write is going to draw a parallel with something I've already seen before. Namely, if I now divide everything through by AB, just divide the lot, okay? It's going to look like this. Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> Do you see this is what I would get if I divided through by AB? Now, that, that takes us away from general form. However, the reason why this looks nice and neat is because look at how many parallels this has to this, to the standard form of an ellipse, right? Everything's equal to 1. You've got your x's and your a's matched up. You've got your y's and your b's matched up, which I think is, generally speaking, much better than this, which is actually a reversal of where the pairs are supposed to be happening. Um, the x and the cos theta and the a, they're all meant to gather together. You see that? Right? And the y and the sine theta and the b, they're all meant to be gathered together. So I think this is kind of a nicer way to write it. Okay. Now, uh, I, will, I won't actually just prove it, I'm just going to state it so that um, you know that you've got it right. This is not quite the same as the equation for the normal. Where would I have to change? How far would I have to go back up to change this working to get to the normal? Yeah, this, this derivative is not the one I want. I actually want the negative reciprocal of this, which would be a sine theta on b cos theta, right? And that would come in here. If you go ahead and you try that out, this is the equation of the tangent. The equation of the normal will look like this. Go here. Uh, it's not nearly as neat as the equation of the tangent, which is unsurprising. You have this difference of squares weirdly over here. But you still have the a, x, and cos theta uh, married up together, and the b, and the y, and the sine theta also together. So it's still got a nice symmetry to it. Okay. Now, what did we do to establish this? We kind of needed to pull a bit of a swifty on this guy. Right? We'll prove this properly later on. Okay? But once you know that, the rest of it falls out very, very simply. Like, What do we need to know? We need to know chain rule, and then we needed to know y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1. Like you learned that a long time ago. So parametric, the parametric equations sort of made this very, very simple. Okay? It's nice. 